Welcome back. We're still talking about the state of the polity, and we've been joined by a legal practitioner, Tony Ebe. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I'm sure you caught a few seconds of the conversations, but let Mr. Thompson finish. You come in to look at us to tell us about the constitution that we've had and the ones that we should have. Mr. Thompson. Yes, uh, where were we? We were looking we're at... We were talking uh, about communication that would help to... Non-violent non communication. communication. Right now, the Nigerian polity is, is been heated up. So one of the first things we need to do is that we need to let the nation know that this is normal with the people who have been brutalized. India would not have survived if Gandhi did not introduce non-violence. Now, in the Nigerian case, we need to introduce non-violence into the national narrative so that discussions that are meaningful can go on. Uh, it has been pointed out rightly by the uh, vice president in his capacity as acting president that uh, hatred is one of the biggest challenges. And let's remember that hatred is not just on the surface, it's inside the heart. So if we are going to address these things adequately, we must create a platform of non-violent communication and educate Nigeria on it so that if anybody is going, to come, is going to make any contribution into national discourse, you must follow the rules of non-violent communication or compassionate communication. Just a quick question. Is national discourse different from political discourse? Well, there could be contaminants if we, we choose to, for this platform, we could, you know, permit the uh, permit the time to be switched. Because sometimes when the politicians talk, they talk like politicians. <laughs> yes. And then when they, when they come to this other side, they begin to talk like national. So yes. how do we balance that? No, no, no. You see, for statesmen, <laughs> let me tell you something. Um, in politics, people think about now. When statesmen speak, they look into generations to come. And that's why you'll find out that everything Prof has said this morning is seasoned with things like that. And you'll find out that uh, Prof is in his 80s. We are in almost in our 60. We are almost running into 60 soon. We don't plan to leave a nation behind that is going to be in turmoil and leave bloodshed behind for our children. So we need to have a platform for statesmen to be able to, you know, make injections into the national narrative. But let's not lose track of what we're saying. What's more important for me is this. What the American forefathers did was that they first created programs to heal the wounded psyche of the American colonies. The and, natives. Yes, the natives. And people like uh, Thomas Paine wrote the book, uh, Common Sense. The people felt they were not good enough to have a nation of their own in 1775, 1776. That's why in Nigeria, when we were going to become a nation, we were not able to do it by ourselves. We needed the supervision of the people who had been our colonial masters, which was a grave error. In the American case, they had people who were able to think it through, that wait a minute, how can we allow the people who enslaved us to be the ones to set the foundation of our nation? That takes you back to what Obafemi Awolowo noticed in 1968. It takes you back to what uh, uh, Tafar, Tafar Balewa mentioned as intractable problems in 1960, in the 7th of October. Now, the issue now is this. Before you can have a constitution that will work, properly, a meaningful con uh, 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 constitution, we must do what the Americans did first, which is what? Lay a fresh foundation, recognizing that there are tribal nations, recognizing that there must be unity in diversity, and then create a program that will mop up all the hatreds across the country. It's doable. And then on that program, we can now lay down a constitution that will now be meaningful. And I want to emphasize again, most of the problems Nigeria has today are problems that were created even before Nigeria was born. And all we have to do is to apply a lot of understanding, make it factual, <coughs> take up those eternal truths to create a future and build a vision that will make everybody calm down. Let me say this. Right now, there's in the news a 27-year-old man in Nigeria married a 72-year-old woman, Britain. Now, 